Hey guys, in this episode, I'm going to talk about event handling in Blazor application. It's not like we have not talked about event handling in our previous examples, but I want to dive deeper into event handling and talk a little bit about how events are handled for DOM elements that you have on your Razor components. Let's first talk about uh, event, how event handling is done in JavaScript versus event handling is done in Razor components. So what I want to do, I want to show current date time on a button click. And if I want to do that using JavaScript, the way I do it, I add HTML button component, button um, control, and then I call uh, I call a JavaScript function on, on click event. So whenever you click on this button, it uh, calls this function, which will assign current date time to inner HTML of demo which is a paragraph and same thing if i want to do it with razor component uh what i'm gonna do i'm gonna use an attribute called this on click event and that way i can map my event my on click event of button html button event to a c shop function and that way i can use all the c shop library all the dotnet right libraries to assign the current date time for my paragraph and the way it works is Whenever you click the button, it will assign um, it will assign the current date time to the string, and then it will call state has changed event that will read under your page, and that way whatever is bound, uh, whatever is assigned to the string will be bound to um, will be bound to the paragraph that you're putting in. Uh, but sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes you have to you know trigger events which are related to your DOM elements. Sometimes you have to trigger elements when your mouse moves or trigger, elem, or trigger events when you are pressing any key. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. I have already uh, added some uh, examples here. Uh, some of them are mouse related, some of them are keyboard related, and then towards the end I'm going to talk a little bit about Lambda expressions. So uh, if you look at this mouse event arguments, you can see that um, when I move my mouse, it's changing the location of mouse here. And if I move my mouse here out of that div tag, uh, the, the tracking of that mouse stops. That means I can only track my mouse location when I'm in this div. And when I get out of this div, then this mouse out event gets triggered. And if I if I click, uh, if I do a left click, you can see that it changes to left click. And if I do a right click, then it changes to right click event. I can also scroll and then it calls that mouse wheel event. And uh, then also I can do double click and that's how, um, that's how that event gets captured. All right, let's look at the code, what I've done here. Uh, so these are mouse um, event arguments. So I have added a div tag in which I am using all these attributes, which are um, which are these events, you know, on click event, on mouse up event. So you can see that these events are looking so much like global global events that people use in uh, the HTML control. The only thing that you need to do, you need to add add the rate. Um, Add it to add it on in the name of the event in order to map your events to your C# -sharp functions. So you can see that I'm calling on click on mouse up on double click on mouse wheel on mouse move on mouse out. All of these functions, all these events are mapped to only one function, which is a C# -sharp function. So if I go to this function, if I go to this function, I have written that function um, in my C# -sharp code and um, you can see that it takes mouse event arguments as parameter. That function takes mouse event argument as parameter. And that mouse event argument has type which shows what kind of action has been performed on that mouse. Is it moving or is it, are you clicking? Is it a right click or is it a double click? Are you scrolling? Are you getting out of the div? So that's how I can, I can handle, um, the events related to mouse and what happens whenever this function gets called 
blazor components call state has changed even too so that way it re-renders the page to show what's been happened when you click on something or when you move your mouse or when you scroll your mouse and that way you can handle mouse related events on your razor components so these are mouse related events let's talk about keyboard related events so um, there are two ways i can get input from my keyboard one is to bind my text box to a value and then you can see the value here whenever my page gets rendered or I could map my keyboard to on key down event. So whenever I press the key, that's when the function gets called and that's get updated directly. Let's check it out. So here I'm gonna say this is, um, this is a keyboard event, keyboard event. And whenever, uh, whenever I click somewhere else, that's when state has changed gets called and that's when my value in the input box the input html gets mapped to the value that i've defined in my c -sharp code and that's what gets populated here but like i said that's not the case we do not every time we do not want to um get these key presses only on state has changed sometimes we do need uh, these key presses as we type in. So whenever I say this is a keyboard event, so as I'm typing, you can see that it's getting uh, it, it's getting printed right here. So that's you can do that because of the key down event, and you can also capture keys like caps lock, backspace, delete, tab. So these are these are the events if you want to capture on on the text box you can do that too let's look at the code for this so if i go to my keyboard event here so the first text box that i used that was a normal input text box where i bound the value to bound the value to a property and then whenever i clicked somewhere else that's when you know state has changed got called and then that what updated my value and that's what we could see in the bound value but in the second text box what i'm doing i'm calling on key down event and i have used on key down event as attribute that's why i can call c sharp function and if we look into this function if we look into this function you can see that i am catching all the keys in my keyboard event arguments in this E dot key is how I know what has been passed and that's what I'm mapping to my property here key pressed and that's what has been bound to key pressed uh, colon so whenever I call whenever I press something keyboard handler gets called which eventually called state has changed and after rendering that's where you can see the value on my screen there is one more thing that I want to talk about uh, which is keyboard related is you can um it's not really keyboard related it's any event related so if i say that um if i check this checkbox which is prevent default and i start typing anything here you can see that key pressed is recording my actions whatever i'm typing here but whatever the uh default uh default action that uh, keyboard was doing it stopped doing and you can do that using prevent default uh, here i have mapped key down key down prevent default it's a boolean value which gets set whenever i check the checkbox and that gets called on this check uh check check uh check changed event uh which takes change event argument and whatever has been set to uh to the text box it sets the value to the text box to on on key down event and whatever happens on key down event for that input you know stops so if i uncheck it again and stop test uh, typing i'll be able to type and it will do everything that key down event will start doing so that's uh, that's all um, events about keyboard um i want to a little bit talk about lambda expressions because using lambda operator you can have controls over uh, the controls which are dynamically getting generated 
uh, in your user components. So let's say if I am uh, in a for loop, I'm generating these buttons and I want to know which button I'm clicking on. So if I click on these buttons, you can see that uh, you have selected number one and the mouse position is 393 by 613. If I press four, it says that it's four and it changes the mouse position. So it depends, it knows which button I'm clicking on even after, you know, dynamically generating this, uh, these buttons in a for loop. So let's, uh, let's look at the code. I'm gonna close this and open this HTML. Uh, you can see that I'm looping through, um, looping five times and creating these buttons um, as I go through the loop. Uh, so if I want to capture which button has been called, what I'm gonna do, I can use the Lambda operator uh, on, on click event, but I'll have to use attribute here, attribute on click event. And here I'm gonna, I can pass that mouse uh, event argument, lambda operator and a C sharp function that I can call and I can pass the event argument and the number of the button which gets set by whenever we're looping through by the index of the loop. So if I go, if I go to this function, you can see that I'm catching mouse event arguments and I'm catching the number of the button and that's what I am assigning to this button number string you have selected button number and the location of the button. So this is how you can uh, do so many things with um, uh, with your uh, keyboard, mouse, and using Lambda exhibitions, you can handle the controls that you're creating dynamically. Um, yeah, that's all about uh, events. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook. And I code live on Twitch. So if you want to come and say hi, please do. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.